Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking, uh, studying chapter four, how we need to position ourselves in the right place, the right time, doing the right thing, so that we can receive God's, receive God's provision. What else? So that we can be protected, okay? And uh, now the fourth thing we will look at, how our positioning ourselves in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, will also position us to be promoted. Okay? Thank you, Lucy. So, you know, we must be positioned right to be promoted in life so that we can grow into all things that God has planned and purpose for our lives. A good example is that of King David. Now, we know that King David, most of his life, he lived in the caves, right? He lived in the wilderness, in the forest, because King Saul was chasing him to kill him. And we, we also uh, know that 400 committed men were with him, a strong army he had. <coughs> Sorry. So we, when, uh, when King Saul died, we see that, you know, we read in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, uh, you know, David asked God, God, what should I do now? Should I go to the cities of Judah? Because David knew that he's a king. He's not been anointed king. Now King, king Saul is dead. Time for him to become king. So he asked God, can I go to and uh, move to city life? Okay, and what does God say? He says, okay, go. And God sends him to Hebron. And when he goes to Hebron, you know, the people of Judah make David as king. Now, what would have happened if David would have said, you know, I'm happy here living in the forest, you know, like jungle book, you know, uh, jumping trees, enjoying myself here, you know, and I have 40 men, their wives, their children. We're a happy family. We made a good uh, you know, place for ourselves in this jungle, in this wilderness. We are happy here. You know, I like this cave kind of life. I don't want to be made king. Will he be? A, will he be promote? Would he be a, a promoted to the position of a king? No, right? He would never be promoted to his position as a king. He would have died living living in the caves for the rest of his life with his four hundred men. But we see that David moved from the caves to the city life. And as soon as he moved, he was promoted and became the king of Judah. And then the rest of Israel also made him king. Okay, So we need to be the right place at the right time, doing the right thing so that we can also receive promotion. And then finally, you know, uh, we need to position, be positioned to be in the current move of God. Okay, now God hasn't stopped working. God is still unfolding his plan and purposes on the earth. He's moving on with his program. But for some reason, we people, we get stuck with God's previous move or the old move of God. We don't want to progress. We don't want to go ahead. We don't want to see what new things God is doing and move in the uh, timing and the plan and the program or uh, what God is doing today and now in our season. Yes, there is definitely what God has done in the past. That is history. That's our foundation. We learn things about God, but we need to move on with God, what God is doing today in uh, in the in the church um, in the world around okay so let's look at a few examples numbers chapter 21 verses 5 to 9 we see here that you know the people of israel they grumbled and murmured against god and god sent venomous snakes or serpents that bit them and they died and the people cried out to god and what did god tell moses to do he tells him to make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And all who look, who are bitten by the snakes or serpents, when they look up to that bronze serpent, they will be healed. Okay. So that was God's plan for that moment when he wanted to rescue them. But what happens, we read 100 years later in uh, 2 Kings chapter 18, 
we see that this people of Israel had made this bronze serpent as an idol. And they were worshipping it as an idol. They got so locked into that fact that, you know, the serpent saved them. This is what God did in a certain time, in a certain way. But God has stopped. You know, he didn't say make the serpent, make it as, a, as, a, a, as an idol and worship it. He's, God has moved on. But the people were so locked into the past move of God, the past work of God, and therefore this became a high idol and it became a hindrance from them to worship God himself. Okay? Look at an, an other example, Moses. You know, when the people were journeying in the wilderness, the people cried out to God for water. And what did God tell Moses? Take your staff or your stick and strike the rock. So when Moses struck the rock, what came out? Water. Okay. There was another instance when the people grumbled and cried out to God for water. And what did God tell Moses? He told him, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Second time it was speak to the rock. But what did Moses do? He was so angry with the people. He took his staff and Tuck, tuck, he hit it twice. Okay, he struck the rock twice, and uh, he was because he was so agitated, he was so angry. And what happens? God was so displeased, and he was so angry with Moses. And because of that, God said, "Because you disobeyed me, you will not enter the promised land." Okay, he failed to do what God wanted him to do at that moment, in that place, in that time. He followed in the previous instructions of God. When God told him, strike the rock, this time God said, speak to the rock. But he did not follow God's instruction. He did not want, do what God wanted him to do at the particular time. And we see that he failed and he lost out on his portion of God's plan and purpose. He could not enter the promised land. So you see the consequences you see how serious it is when we step away from what God wants us to do and the way he wants us to do and the things he wants us to do in our lives. Okay. Another example we see here in, your, in, your, uh, in the publication is John chapter 1 verses 36 and 37. Now John the Baptist was the one who declared that Jesus is the Messiah. He says, behold, the Lamb of God and who takes away the sins of the world, okay? And we see that soon after he says this, two of John's own disciples, what do they do? They follow Jesus, okay? But they don't say, hey, we are, you know, we are baptized by John the Baptist. We are born a Baptist. We will continue to be a Baptist. We will die as a Baptists, okay? They didn't go running behind John the Baptist, but when John the Baptist said, this is the Messiah, what did they do? They immediately left John and they became a disciple of Jesus. So you see that they, they moved the current move of God. They saw John as somebody who was pointing to the Messiah, something they can follow for a certain period, but when they saw the Messiah, they moved to the current move of God and they started moving uh, and they started following Jesus. They, they, push, they position themselves at the right place in the right time and they were doing the right um, things. Okay, So it's important for us to position ourselves Okay, if we want to experience God's provision, protection, promotion, and also if we want to be in the current move of God. Okay. If God is saying that the current move he has in for the church today is doing great signs, miracles, and wonders, and we are saying, no, God, you know, it's time for us to preach the gospel, not signs, miracles, and wonders. We are not in the current move of God. We will miss out on what God is doing uh, in and through the church, in and through our lives, and God's current move in the world today. Okay. Now, we will look at things to keep in mind even as we position ourselves. Okay, what are the, some of the things we need to keep in mind even as we position ourselves? The first thing is be willing to let go. Some of us are not willing to let go of our past, right? Some of us are, 
are not willing to let go of the past, and that's why we are not able to step into our future. We are always looking at the past. Now, if you are looking at the past, can you walk ahead? Can you run? If you're running a race, if you look back when all is behind, whoever all is overtaking you, you will lose the race. You will not be able to run ahead into your future. Okay, so if you hold on to your past, you cannot step into your future. You have to be willing to let go. Like Lot's wife. God told Lot, his wife and his two daughters, run, go to the next city, but don't turn back. But Lot's wife was not willing to let go of her past, was not let, willing to let go of Sodom and Gomorrah, all her friends, all the things that was there, and she became a pillar of salt. She was not able to step into her divine destiny, purpose, and the future that God has for her in her life. Yes, there are some things in life which we need to hold on to tightly and not let go. What is that? What are some things in our life that we should hold on to tightly and not let go? Sorry? God's word, yes. Thank you. Jesus? Yeah. Hold on to Jesus, your relationship with Jesus. What else? Hold on to your family, your marriage, your spouse, your wife, your husband, and your children. So these are some of the things that we don't let go. But there are other things that God wants us to let go. Our weaknesses, our wrong attitudes, you know, um, wrong behaviors, uh, all of those things that God wants us to let go. The second thing that we need to keep in mind is, you know, be careful. Be willing to step out into the unknown. You know, when God tells us to go somewhere, he will not tell us which place, what is the job, who are the friends, where we are going to live, street, address, everything. He will just say, move from Bangalore to Chennai or move from Bangalore to uh, Mumbai. Okay? And you need to just be obedient and move. Don't say, God, who are my friends, which is the church, you know, um, where am I going to stay and all of those things. Even as you take that step, God will lead you. A good example is whom? Abraham. Yes. Okay. The third thing is be careful how you enter and how you leave. How you leave determines how you enter. It's very, very important. Now, for example, Im imagine that you are in, um, you know, uh, working in a job in Bangalore. And God tells you, I want you to move to Mumbai. Okay, so you're waiting for the last day. Last day, you're saying, I'm going to give my boss nicely all these five years. He has made mis uh, my life miserable. You know, this colleague, that person, this person, I'm going to give them nicely. So the last day, you know, you prepare everything, you need them, you give them nicely. And then you are happy and you're going to go to Mumbai for your job. But even as you do that, you know, your, your exit has not been, your leaving has not been good. The way you are entering is also not going to be good. You're going to enter with a lot of bitterness, hatred, and anger. Now imagine God is after two, three years, God is saying, go back to Bangalore. <laughs> You'll have to face the same people, maybe in your church, your family, your neighborhood, you know. So be very, very careful, okay? Um, uh, the way you live, the way you leave determines the way you enter. And if you're going to mess up things, you're going to carry that mess along with you into the place that you are going to enter. All the hatred and that anger is going to go along with you. Okay? So be careful how you uh, enter and how you leave, how you exit and how you and um, enter okay be open to change okay when god takes you into something new there will always be change don't say you know that was good what i did in the past was good how i lived there was good everything was nice now we need to accommodate change we need to reposition ourselves uh, you know um, we need to do things differently and god will give us the grace and the strength okay before you make the move you know prepare for it before God takes you to the next season of life, he repositions you somewhere else. You know, you need to prepare 
for yourself. Prepare where you're going, what you're doing, what job, which church you'll have to join. <coughs> Sorry. Look for all of these things and prepare for the change. Okay. And God will uh, at all times use the actions. You know, God will at times, sorry, at times will use the actions of others to position you. Okay. God can uh, get people to speak into your lives. God can take you to a church where people can help you, you know, get a good place to live uh, and all of those things. So God can use the actions of other people to position you in the right place, the right time and doing the right things. It can be even your family, your pastor, your mentors, your teachers, whoever. Okay. The next one is be strategic. Don't wander aimlessly. Okay. So when we, um, when we look at our lives, we need to see as everything as connected. Remember I said, you know, when God places us somewhere, we need to know that he has placed us here for a specific reason that is to build his kingdom. So look at everything with a sense of purpose, reason, meaning, uh, you know, to enhance and to build God's kingdom. Okay. And um, the next one is, you know, God is greater than our mistakes. He can reposition you to do his will. Okay. For example, Moses. Moses, he realized that he was supposed to deliver his people out of Egypt. So what did he do? He took matter into his own hands. He killed an Egyptian, but he had to run away. It took him 40 years for the next Pharaoh to die and for him to come back to Egypt. So even though he made a mistake, you know, God is greater than our mistakes. He can reposition us and help us to fulfill his plan and purpose. Another example is Jonah. You know, Jonah, God told him to go to Nineveh, but he ran away to Tarshish. Okay. And he got caught in the middle of a big storm. And in the middle of the big storm, he was swallowed by a big fish. And then he says, God, not my will, but your will be done. Okay. And he says, God, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Okay. So, you know, then God takes him back to Nineveh. Okay. So sometimes, you know, we go through, we make mistakes. Um, there's nobody who does not mis make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Um, we all, but yet sometimes we make choices and we decide on things. Okay. But we need to know that even when we make a wrong move, a wrong decision, a wrong choice, we can reposition ourselves by going back to God, asking for forgiveness and ask him to show us where he wants us to be, what he wants us to do. And when we re come back and reposition ourselves at in the right place, do the right thing at the right time, you know, God can um, use our mistakes uh, to bring about and fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives. Okay. So that is uh, chapter four about how we need to position ourselves so that uh, right in the right place, the right time, doing the right thing so that God can fulfill his plan and his purpose for our lives. Okay. Anyone has any questions? Anyone has any questions? Okay, so if you're in a, in a place where you're not seeing any fruit, there is no provision of God, there's no protection of God, you need to ask yourself, are you in the right place? Are you doing the will of God? Are you, uh, you know, uh, obeying him and obedient to what he has called you to do? If you're not, you can reposition yourself and God will, you know, um, give you the protection, the promotion, the, pro uh, the providence, and also will help you to move in the current move that he has for your life okay any questions online students any questions online students okay yeah. no questions Okay, if there's no questions, then we will uh, move on to chapter 5. Okay, chapter 5 is, um, just give me a minute, please. Yeah. 
Okay, the price of the high calling of God. Okay, we need to understand that even as we go about fulfilling God's plan and purpose for our life, that there is a high price to pay. Yes, it's exciting. It's the best thing in our life that we can do. It's fulfilling. It's uh, it's joyous. We can experience joy and peace. But it's not always going to be easy. Okay, there is going to be difficulties. There is going to be suffering, hardships. There is going to be sacrifice. Now, some of us don't like these words, sacrifice. We don't like suffering. We don't like hardships. You know, but you know, when God calls us. There is going to be a certain amount of suffering, sacrifice that we would uh, go through if we need to fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives. Okay. Uh, so there is a, there is a place uh, for, and a time for suffering and, and sacrifice. And our life will not be devoid of these things. Even as we fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives, it will cost us something okay look at luke chapter 14 verse 27 can somebody read that please luke 14 27 and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me come after me he cannot be my disciple amen so if you have to be a disciple of jesus what should you do you have to bear his cross what is the one thing that you have to bear even as you follow jesus the cross okay you have to take up your cross and you have to take it up once in a year once in a lifetime once in every season no you have to take it up daily okay every day of our lives as disciples of jesus christ involves carrying our cross okay and carrying the cross you know uh, is what does cross denote what does cross denote what does cross mean? Suffering. The cross means three things. It's a place of suffering. It's a place of separation. And it's a place of sacrifice. So when Jesus died on the cross, it was not something very easy for him. It was a place of suffering where he took on the sins of the entire world. It was a place of separation immediately after he took on the sins of the whole world his father separated from him his father forsake forsook him because he was he was a sin burden bearer and it was also a place of sacrifice jesus made the full sufficient perfect sacrifice for our sins on the cross okay so let's look at galatians chapter 6 verse 14 can somebody read that please but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So the entrance of the cross into our lives, you know, what does it do? It separates us from the world. We are living in the world, but we are crucified to it, which means we are dead to the world. What does it mean being dead to the world? It means that the things of the world no longer attract us any more. The things of the world is, is no longer our desire. Okay. Why? Because the cross has come into our lives. And because the cross is part of our lives, we are separated. We are um, separated from this world. And we are also coming to a place we are sacrificing the things of the flesh to feed the things of the spirit okay so what do we mean when we say the cross is a place of sacrifice when we say the cross is a place of sacrifice we mean two things it means giving up something that you have a right to you have a right to do something but you are giving it up so paul says i can do all things are permissible for me but i don't do all things why because if i do those things it's going to be a hindrance to others so the place of, of sacrifice means two things it can mean giving up something you have a right to it also means taking on something that you don't have to do two things giving up something that you have a right to and also means taking on something that you don't 
have to. So look at an example of Paul's life in Philippians chapter 3. Okay, Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. Can somebody read that? But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yes. So Paul is saying whatever things are a gain to me, that means I could have become a great scholar. I could have become the next Gamaliel, who was the greatest scholar, the teacher of that time. You know, I could have been the greatest Pharisee uh, in my town. I could have done a lot of things, but he says, I gave them all up. Okay. I gave them all up so that I can lay my life down for the cause of Christ. Okay. So he gave up his right to be a great scholar, a great teacher, a great Pharisee, everyone to look on to himself um, as a great Pharisee, a learned man. He gave up that right to it and he took on something. He took on what? He took on God's call for his life. And what was God's call for his life? What was God's call for Paul's life? Huh? Teaching the gospel to the Gentiles. And also God said that his life, his life is not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of persecution and hardships and sacrifice and difficulty. So look at Paul. He's saying, I'm giving up all of these things so that I can take on what God has for me. Okay. Look at what Jesus says in John chapter 12, verses 20 to 24 to 26. Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Amen. Thank you. So here what is it saying is if we live a self-centered life, like a grain of wheat that says, you know, I want to contain everything within myself. I want to remain alone. What will happen to that grain of wheat? It will just be a grain of wheat. But if that grain of wheat is willing to die, which means if it's willing to fall to the ground and die, what will happen? It will it will become a plant and will give forth or bring forth many fruit or many more grain which will help benefit other people. So Jesus said that if you're willing to take up your cross or you're willing to die to the things of the world, you're willing to die for your own fleshly desires, you're willing to take up your cross and follow me, then you will bear much fruit. So if you want to be fruitful in your life, if you want to bear fruit, if you want promotion, if you want to become, do great things in life, the pathway for fruitfulness is always death. What is the pathway to fruitfulness and promotion and growth is always death. Okay. So if you want to move from glory to glory, you have to die to the things of this world. You have to die to the pleasures of this world, the passions of this world, and to your own will every time you die you're getting ready for what when jesus died what happened to him what happened after jesus died he resurrected thank you to get through he resurrected right every time you die you're getting ready for resurrection we all want resurrection because that resurrection is glorious you know, happy and it is uh, glamorous. Everybody knows about it, but we don't want to die. We're saying, God, give me the resurrection power so that I can do all things, so that I can be mighty for you. But God is saying, first, die to your self, die to your wrong, wrong attitudes, die to your weaknesses, your selfish motives. Only then, when you die, can there be resurrection. So every time we die to ourselves, we are preparing to bear much fruit, okay? Every time you and I make sacrifices, is going to lead to greater fruitfulness for the kingdom of God, okay? 
Now, even as we talk about sacrifices, we need to understand that there are two kinds of sacrifices. There are daily sacrifices and there are life sacrifices. Okay. So daily sacrifices means what we make every day. Okay. So you're saying that, hey, you know, in my life, I've never woken up at five o'clock, but here in Bible college, I have to wake up at five o'clock, you know, so that we can have prayer time. Okay. So it's a daily sacrifice that you are making. And this daily sacrifice is a sacrifice that is building up your spirit man. Every day getting up in the morning, reading a Bible, praying, having a prayer together in the hostel is building up your spirit man. Okay. Some of you can say, hey, I've never fasted and prayed. Here in Bible college, we have to fast and pray. But that is actually building up your spirit man you're sowing into your spirit man you're putting into your account and god is going to reward you god is going to raise you up god is going to build up the spiritual things and activate the gifts gifts so that you can be used mightily okay there are times when in daily life we are willing to not lie steal cheat some of you in the in your workplace you know your boss calls you tells you to write a wrong report write the wrong numbers say the wrong things do the wrong things and you say you know this is against my this is against my lifestyle my kingdom lifestyle my kingdom culture i belong to a culture where i can't lie steal bribe do things are that are wrong and what will happen it's a daily sacrifice. Every day your boss is not going to treat you nicely. He's going to be angry with you because you are not doing the bad things or the wrong things that he's asking you to do. You might not get a promotion. You might not get a pay increase. But God is seeing what daily sacrifices that you are making. And he's going to be faithful to reward you. Or in your work culture, you know, where people are pulling down everybody because they want to rise up. Okay. And you are also doing the same thing. You know, it's not a daily sacrifice that you are making. Or you're living like the people of this world in the way they dress, in the way they talk, you know, in the way they behave and gossiping and backbiting. You're living like the world in your workplace, in your neighborhood, uh, you know, it, uh, in the church. It's sad. Okay. That is not making a sacrifice. But if you're saying, hey, I'm not going to talk back i'm not going to be gossiping i'm not going to dress like the people of the world live like the people of the world party like the people of the world you know um, indulge in certain characteristics like the people of the world that is your daily sacrifice so every day we make daily sacrifices choose to if somebody does evil to us whether we need to do evil back to them or respond in a positive way somebody talks rudely to us we forgive them, talk nicely to them. Somebody who has done bad to us, they are in a, in a time of need for help. And we're saying, why should I help them? But you are saying, hey, that's not what God wants me to do. You know, I will go and help. I will care for them. That is daily sacrifices. So we all have to make daily sacrifices and life sacrifices. Some of the life sacrifices that we make are really big. Um, it's a turning point in our life. Okay. Um, it's something that is going to um, change the course of our life. But, you know, God is asking us to do it. You know, we need to be faithful and sincere. It can be leaving your place and going to another place, leaving one job, going to another job. It could also be, you know, um, uh, moving from one country to another. It can be me leaving your job and going into full-time ministry. Whatever it is, you know, uh, that is your life sacrifices it's not happened daily but you know once in a season once in your life but a huge uh, choices that you're going to make or you're lo in love with somebody they're not a believer and you know that you shouldn't be marrying them you're leaving that that is a life sacrifice and you're willing to take on marry the right person that god has for your life okay so look at uh, what first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 to 27 says can do somebody you, read that please do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize run in such a way that you may obtain it and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a perishable crown 
but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it to subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should come, should become disqualified. Amen. Thank you. So here is Paul is comparing our race of life to a running race, or uh, he's comparing our lives to an athlete. You know, an athlete, or you know, those who want to become good cricketers, footballers, you know, gymnasts, whatever. We see that they are willing to give up on so many things in life. You know, it's practice, 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 practice all the time. Okay, they give up entertainment, you know, partying, drinking, you know, even certain kind of foods, uh, you know, they eat the right kind of foods, the right kind of diet they are in, and they're practicing, and, you know, sometimes even staying away from family and all of those things, because they want to take part in a race and they want to win a prize, they want to win a crown that is perishable. So Paul is saying, hey, for an earthly race, just to win a prize, you know, when these um, uh, athletes are doing so much, you know, to get into the cricket team, to get in the football team, to be the best football player, to be the best athlete, to win the race. When they are going through so much of discipline, how much more discipline should you and I be even as we are running the, the race of life? Okay, we need to persevere. We need to endure. Because even as we finish this race, it's not about who comes in the race of life. It's not who comes first, second, and third. But it's all who finish the race are going to get an crown that is imperishable. Okay? So he's saying that, you know, uh, so I run. I run and I beat my body and take care of my body and I discipline my body so that I cannot be disqualified in the race of life. Okay? So... When we make these sacrifices, daily sacrifices, we need to remember that we need to be disciplined, okay? Because we are going to get a crown that is imperishable, okay? Um, and also look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Can somebody read that, please? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So here Paul is telling us in Romans chapter 12 that we are to make our bodies as what? Make our bodies as a living sacrifice, okay. not as a dead living. sacrifice yeah. okay it is easier to make a dead sacrifice than a living sacrifice okay so every day we make a living sacrifice we are presenting our bodies to god we're saying god you know every day i'm putting to death the deeds in my flesh things that are not pleasing in your sight and what kind of sacrifice that god requires does he require a dead sacrifice or a living sacrifice a living sacrifice, okay? A living sacrifice that is fully consecrated to God, a life that is fully committed to God, a life that is fully passionate for God, a life that is fully yielded and surrendered and submitted to God, okay? So that is about daily sacrifices. I also spoke about um, life sacrifices that we have to make uh, once in a while, like Abraham, God told him to leave his family, and go to a place that he will show him. What if Abraham said, God, why don't you show me the promises here? I'm here with my father, my parents. I'm here with my uncles, aunts. All my relatives are here. Why don't you reveal your promise here in this land? Why do you want to take me to another land? What if Abraham had not stepped out, made this life sacrifice of saying, God, I'm obedient. I'm going to step out. Even though I do not know where I'm going, I'm going to go there. So he made a life sacrifice, okay? Life sacrifices are of greater magnitude than daily sacrifices. Of course, daily sacrifices are important. They are a turning point. There are big steps in our life. 
but you know they are going to change the course of our life they're going to change the destiny of our life and we are going to fulfill god's plan and purpose for our life another example is moses what if moses said god you know i'm raised up in this palace you know i want to live here for the rest of my life uh, rule as the next pharaoh of egypt what if he did not follow god's plan for his life to deliver his people out of egypt okay but it says that he chose not to do that he chose to deliver his people so it says that when he came into his heart or when he understood that god had raised him up for such a time as this he had a choice to make he could have chosen the riches of egypt and the reproaches of god's people but he chose to suffer along with his people and give up the riches of egypt okay he was willing to give up his position as a next pharaoh to identify himself with his people so that was a big life sacrifice that moses made okay so life sacrifices are turning points you know you make a decision you cannot turn back those decisions drastically alter your life and god will bring you to some of those turning points in your life and you know um, he will give you the grace and the strength to do what requires to do in that season and even as you take that move okay there are uh, examples numerous examples of life sacrifices like the missionaries hudson taylor you know william carey david livingston so many of them you can see all of them in the bible college all of their um, life examples are uh, you know the wall hangings are there so these people have made great life sacrifices now there is also a spirit led sacrifices versus a fleshly sacrifices okay spirit led sacrifices versus fleshly sacrifices now sometimes we can say hey you know we can go around telling people you know i had a good job i gave up my job i was earning so much for the sake of the gospel you know i'm here preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel and everyone will think oh wow what a great person gave up such a good job great money and just going and serving god but if you really look into this person's life this person when they was they were working they would you know get up at 5:30 go for their job work late hours but now they are in ministry they wake up at 10:30 because they think hey people are free only at 10:30 only after that i can go and preach aram say you know easily take it go just meet one or two people and they say you know we gave up everything for the sake of the gospel now that is fleshly sacrifice okay that is not spirit led sacrifice or you saying hey i came to bible college maybe you've come to bible college because you had nowhere else to go or no one else was taking you into any other college and you say the last resort was hey apc took me so i've come you know gave up everything i've come into a bible college that is a fleshly sacrifice but if you are here and saying you know it's difficult for me i'm finding it difficult to study to understand english to you know go through this discipline of bible college but i'm here because god wants me to that is a spirit led sacrifice now how do we know whether it's a fleshly sacrifice or a spirit led sacrifice you can see the fruits if you are bearing fruit then it is a sacrifice you are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing it's a spirit led sacrifice that god is pleased with and he is helping you bear fruit you can see people's lives change you can see growth you can see promotion but if you're not able to see fruit if you're not able to see growth if you're not able to see promotion then you know it is a fleshly sacrifice and what do you do at that time you know you are go to god you ask for forgiveness you know you repent and then you ask god god help me to refocus and realign myself to come back into the place and the purpose that you have for me and when you do that you will see fruit so one way to know whether you are bearing fruit uh, uh, one way to know whether you are making a fleshly sacrifice versus a spirit led sacrifice is to see whether you are bearing fruit okay So some things we need to keep in mind is the price that God wants you to pay is not the same as the price God is calling someone else to pay okay 
so sometimes when you are you know um, working hard you know there is a higher price that you are called to pay some other people in the same field will not be paying that same greater price or they will not be making the same greater sacrifice okay and um, don't compare your life with them saying you know god is partial look at that pastor everything is so easy for him look at me you know i have to walk i don't even have a bike i don't even have a cycle that pastor has a car he's enjoying himself things are so easy for him hey god has called you to be in a certain place to make certain sacrifices you know he wants you to go through it you go through it okay it's a time and season but god would bring you to a place of promotion provision and you can enjoy that okay and the last thing is pay the price with joy okay so even as you go through sufferings even as you go through difficulties even as you go through hardships you need to remember that you know uh, don't grumble don't murmur okay uh, if it's a sacrifice that you're making you know be happy be joyous about it uh, don't put your burdens on somebody else's shoulder don't make them bear your burden each one of us have to bear our own burdens we have to take upon our own responsibilities and we have to make our own sacrifices and not put off our responsibility on somebody else put on our sacrifice to somebody else and and get them to sacrifice get them to go through difficulties but we have to pay the price we have to go through what god is calling us to go through and knowing that there is a big cost there's a big price that we have to pay but it's not all suffering it's not all hardship it's not all sacrifice but there is also reward even in the midst of suffering even in the midst of sacrifice even in the midst of hardships and difficulties we are going to enjoy god's glory we are going to see his provision we are going to experience his joy peace and we are going to experience his breakthrough and that is going to be so great so much greater than all the hardships and all the difficulties it's like when a mother gives birth to a child she would have gone through immense difficulties and pains and sacrifices the last 9 months the last moments when she's giving birth to the child is very very painful but once she sees the child she's not going to say my gosh you gave me so much of trouble you know 9 months no 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 i didn't do this i didn't do that i gave up my entire life what is a mother going to do just take that baby in the arms and just you know forget every pain and suffering that they have gone through so the fruit that we are going to bear is a lasting fruit is eternal uh, is going to Uh, extend god's kingdom is going to benefit the lives of others but we would have gone through a higher cost a higher price that we had to pay made some sacrifices and it's all worth it okay and you will see the fruit and you will enjoy and god will receive all the glory and honor okay any questions any questions no questions our online students have been very quiet the last two classes no questions from you online students <laughs> okay i see all your thumbs up yes sanjay uh sanjay has his hand raised you have a question okay no question okay this is one more minute in person students anyone has any questions where is that student who was to ask a lot of questions where is he huh he's on leave okay at least he used to ask some questions sorry he's on online okay 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 no questions It's not an interactive class. It's very boring. You should ask some questions. It makes me also think, and it's more it makes the class more engaging. Okay, uh, if there's no more uh, quest, no questions, no doubts, we'll end class here, and uh, we'll continue next week. Thank you all for joining class. Have a good weekend. 
Uh, God bless you. Thank you.